Welcome everyone to today's fun edition of Don't Stop Me Now. And we are interviewing and talking to leaders across the country, people who are CEOs, founders, sales leaders, business leaders, all to find out what's happening with business today, whether it's from emerging leaders or it's, you know, how are we handling the remote and the hybrid situation or bringing people back in the office? We also talk a little bit sometimes about emotional intelligence and how that drives business. But today I have a wonderful guest, my dear friend, Lori Swanson, who is the CEO and founder of Inspire Her Tech, H-E-R, and she's going to tell us a little bit about that. But what it is, is she is driving a space for women in technology. So welcome, Lori. Welcome. Oh. So glad to be here, Paula. Thank you for I'm having me. So glad to have you. I put your LinkedIn profile down at the bottom for when people ask, how do I get a hold of her? Because she's amazing. <laughs> I see that. That's great. So tell me a little bit about um, your business. So um, let's see. So where to start? So, yeah. I, you know, I'll tell you a little about myself, which leads into my business. So Perfect. I, um, after graduating college, I had a degree in business with an emphasis on information technology. And uh, I started my career as a computer programmer. So I was a technologist out of the gate, um, but pretty quickly realized that that was not the path for me. And at the time, I wasn't clear if it was just I didn't love coding or in hindsight, the um, culture was probably not, uh, you know, the best culture for me. I was the only programmer, woman programmer in a sea of guys. And it was what, you know, you hear about of, yeah. uh, about that sort of environment. So, but as I always say, you know, the, the universe doesn't leave you uh, stranded. It takes you where you need to be. And that brought me into using recruiters to help me find a more sales and technology blended role, ah. which ended up actually being recruiting. Um, so I went into recruiting. I found I loved it. I love talking with businesses about building their teams. I love talking with companies um, and, you know, learning the different industries. So that was sort of my business major from the University of Texas that I got to, to feed that. But also, <laughs> the, yeah, but also the, um, you know, the, the uh, being able to talk to individuals about their career path, about, you know, where they were, what, where they wanted to go. And I could be a part of that transition, which, you know, really, hits to the heart of who I am and it, which is, you know, to be of service to, to people. Yeah. Uh, so I was recruiting, working for a firm. I decided that I was going to try my hand at software sales because um, I had been, you know, that was my first really, you know, recruiting was my first foray into sales, right. but I thought I should try a product, you know? And so I did, I sold software. I was the number one rep for my firm. Um, I was good at it, but again, I was out of alignment with uh, what I call my true nature. Yep. And so in that process, I found my way back into recruiting and started my own firm. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have had my own firm now for 25 years uh, have teams as small as three up to 12. I've been in downtown Chicago. I'm now in the suburbs of Chicago. Yeah. And then, as you mentioned, um, we did a rebrand in 2018 and became Inspire Tech right. and added another line of business, which is career coaching for corporate women, women in technology or technology adjacent careers. Mm -hmm. And we really focus on job search strategy, corporate, um, how to navigate within corporate environment as a woman and without giving away too much of yourself or folding too much over to try to fit in. Yeah. And, um, and then uh, really aligning the work you're doing with your true 
essential self so that you have more joy, more peace, more fun, um, and a full, you know, a har full harmonized life. life. Yeah. Right. As, as you know, in my book, I think we've talked about is the only way to show up is that you're for your true self to bring your whole self. And because uh, like you said, if you're not in alignment, that balance can really throw you off key. And it doesn't do it instantaneously. No. It takes time to throw you off key until you're like, oh, what? Where did the time go? What am I doing? <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Sometimes you just keep plugging away. And yeah. then you're like, how did I get here? And how come it didn't give me what I had hoped, you know, or thought it might, or you might find yourself in a career you're super passionate about love, love, love until you don't. Exactly. And then what? And then all of a sudden, you like you said, you know, some time can go by before you recognize that, you know, hey, I'm not, I thought I should keep loving this for the rest of my life, but that isn't necessarily the case. So now what? And even on my website, if people, if your audience goes out to my website, we have a like two minute quiz. Yeah. What stage is your career in? And it talks about, are you, you know, in a career disruption where, you know, by choice or circumstance, you know, it's time for a change. Mm -hmm. You know, or are you in sort of career contemplation where you're thinking about a change, but not quite sure what will I do? How will I do it? Or you could be in career discovery, which is much more active and you're actively pursuing something new for yourself. Or perhaps you are landed in, in career love. Yeah. So the final stage where, but there's so much, in, no matter which stage you're, you're in, there are many opportunities to both do and be within those, within those different stages uh, that can make a huge difference into what you're talking about, which is this alignment, this harmony, this balance, so that, you know, every, um, almost every moment of every day, you're, you're really excited about it. I love that. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to put your, um, your, website up here. So I know it's right there with uh, inspirehertech.com, but I want to make sure it's going across the um, feed. feed. So yeah. Cool. yeah. So let me ask you a question. Are you finding people who are wanting to be or are aspiring leaders, but just don't know how to get there? What oh, are you for sure. What are you helping them or guiding them on? What are well, some of the I mean, I think, great? you know, yeah. I mean, again, I think that we, I see that. I work with women who are at the beginning of their career, you know, mid-career or even at the tail end of their career. And each of those have somewhat different priorities, somewhat different uh, desires. I sometimes hear women at mid to further along and wonder if they've lost their ambition. And that isn't necessarily what's happening. Just things are shifting for you. Yeah. But at the beginning of the career, you're, you're like, oh, I'm, I might be super ambitious and super, you know, excited about climbing the ladder and building my career. And that can change over time, which is actually really cool mm -hmm. uh, as you, you move into more wisdom. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, you know, how do you advance your career is something that we work on a lot. You know, how do you become um, more seen in your organization, mm -hmm. uh, more visible? You know, what can you do? And there's different strategies you can do to become more visible in your organization. How do you um, really, what is it that you want? Yeah, I think that's you know, the key. That's the key. You start sort of with your core values Right. And then, you know, you might create a mission statement and then out of that, you know, surfaces those things that are really important to you. And then you can make decisions about what industry you're in, what size organization you're in, what your role is. And then as you start to understand more about how you, where you want to be and where you want to go, then you can put some practical steps in place to get you there, you know, I and so yeah, I love that because, you know, I'm on career 2.0 and uh, 58 going on 59. But, you know, it's been the most 
beautiful adventure that I'm on and completely different than what I'm do what I've done. And yes, so, and isn't that so fun? Yeah. So fun. I mean, you can take a whole bunch of things throughout your life yeah. from very young to, you know, throughout your career life. Mm -hmm. And then you get a real chance to, to bring it all together and say, none of this, no more of that, but more of this, this. again, more of this. And how can I make that into something that pays me, you know, good money right. enough to have the life that I yearn for? The life that I love. I'm living my best life right now. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's interesting because I never thought I would give up what I had because I built it. But I found that I'm a builder, right? Yes. So once the opportunity came where the building wasn't quite as quick as it was, I was like, hmm. What do I do now? <laughs> and now? So I'll ask you, I'll turn the tables. So how did you know you'd reach that point, Paula? You know, it's interesting. Um, I think I knew probably a couple years before the decision was made. And honestly, the decision um, was made for me. Right. You know? And that's, you know, if I had known what I know now, it would have been different. So, yeah. yeah. No, and I think that that happens to a lot. Like I said, that career disruption, that choice or circumstance, you yeah. know. So um, for you, uh, you know, you may have chosen a couple of years earlier if you'd been aware of yeah. some of those things that were no longer bringing you joy. Right. And we're, but again, we kind of get into, you know, robotic mode and we, we do yeah. the things and, and especially as we get further on in our career and we start thinking, gosh, just five more years and then that's it. You know, I I know. Go five more <laughs> years. Right. But young in your career, too, that happens a lot where the, you know, no longer fulfilled by what they thought was going to fulfill them. Or perhaps the career they chose was a, a career chosen by cultural expectations and not necessarily their yeah. own true nature expectations, you know, for themselves. That is so true. They, mm -hmm. you know, and I knew that, you know, my job was going to be eliminated. Right. You no, know, but I thought I had another couple, three years or so. Um, so it was, came quicker than I uh, had planned or assumed. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing is I think people also find um, one thing about emerging leaders and aspiring leaders that I like to talk about is I think that they don't realize that once you start climbing the corporate ladder and you get to a certain level, it really becomes a group think and not necessarily an individual, um, hear me, this is what I can do creatively and inspiringly. You know, you're almost in this group think. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you know every, every culture is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, again, you'll, you'll find, um, uh, maybe the, uh, the smaller, scrappier firms, um, it, it probably could use a little more group think. Yeah. And, then, and as you go up into a larger corporations, they could use a little bit more of that, you know, entrepreneurial individuality, spirit. uh, spirit to, to, uh, drive some innovation and to create some different energies. I think you're so right. And I think it's not a company or a culture. It's where they are. Are they new? Are they, a, you know, going from medium to enterprise? It's, I think it's not necessarily the culture, but it's the, it's the strategy to grow at some point. Right. Right. So um, women in tech. Yeah. Are you finding a lot more women getting into tech and you, you're so you and I both know that before there was not a lot of women in sales. There's not a lot of women in tech and there was building that. Do you see a, do you see a turn coming that people are actually looking to hire women in tech more often? Well, I think that, you know, um, yes, over, you know, the last few years, you hear a lot about inclusion, diversity, equity, inclusion, right? And belonging, um, which are different things. But uh, 
So I think in the beginning, they spent a lot of time with the idea of diversity. So we were going to hire, you know, um, uh, you know, different, different races and different sexes and different, maybe sexual orientation, if they were a little more progressive right. and ages and, and mm -hmm. all of those things. But there was a real missing piece of inclusion where you can have all these numbers, but how do you make those numbers count? How do you bring meaning to those numbers so that someone feels like they belong, feels like they're included and I think that's been the shift that's coming. And I think as that can, or is, is it's in the beginning stages still, um, mm -hmm. especially in your mid to larger uh, organizations that are tend to follow some of the old school rules or ways of doing things because they think that that's the way to do it. And, and so, but they're very much aware uh, you can't, uh, the data doesn't lie, right? You know, right. We know that having diverse teams, having more women on your team is going to create greater profit. It's going to create greater engagement, less turnover. And one of the ones that I think is really interesting is, especially if you're in uh, manufacturing or something like that, but if you have more women within those areas of your organization, you'll have greater safety records, yeah. better safety records, right? So these things... Um, the, again, you know, the executive team, you can't lie with the data yet. How do you bring that change about, you know, how do you, what does that mean to be an inclusive culture? That one that is, a tr um, that is attractive to, uh, women in, in STEM careers. I particularly focus on, on technology, but any of those, they even say STEAM careers, right. science and, and engineering and and the technical arts, the A yeah. team, and then math. Um, you know, because we all know that uh, women are as uh, have the aptitude for all of those things, but mm -hmm. the culture didn't really support them. And and again, you know, the thinking didn't really support them pursuing those uh, careers. So, long answer, kind of to your question. But when I graduated from University of Texas with a degree in information technology. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I, I'm literally a stat. I was at the top of the arc of the number of women uh, graduating with a tech degree. And then it dropped, dropped, dropped. And there's lots of data around why that happened. Wow. Lots of, but I think we're starting, I'm hoping that it's stabilizing and starting to pop back up again from the lowest percentage, which was around 17 to 19, depending on like when I graduated, the percent of women with technology degrees was 34 to 36, again, depending on where you read the data. And, and now in the last couple of years, it's been 17 to 19%. So really dropping. Um, but with diversity, equity, inclusion becoming, and this idea of being, you know, conscious capitalism yeah. and, and, you know, um, really people wanting to align behind a bigger mission and to align their core values with the core values of an organization and not being willing to put up with, you know, leadership that isn't reflective of them um, in all different ways. Uh, you know, I think that this will continue to bring more and more women back into the technology fields um, because it's fun there, you know, you know and, and back into the sales field. You know, right. well, that's where the money is. I mean, yeah. I keep saying, you know, if you want to, you know, if you want to be a woman of really great financial means, technology and sales, sales and put them together, tech sales, just like <laughs> I did recruiting yeah. software sales, you know, and right. but I would say I wasn't a technologist, even though I call myself a woman in tech, but mm -hmm. not a heads down coder, you know, like right. but still able to take advantage of that market through what, what I am good at, which is relating to people and connecting. And lots of women are, and then right. also very strong, uh, you know, uh, field that's growing is that, um, like UX, UI, web design, user okay. interface, user experience, which is a technical field, but it definitely requires this feminine, you know, sort of ability to, uh, intuit and to create, and, and again, I say feminine ability, and I'm not saying that's 
only women have it. We know there's that we have right. a blend of masculine and feminine traits. It's just that the masculine traits have been the ones that have been honored and taught and acknowledged. And those other ones have, have fallen a bit to the wayside. And, you know, I, I'm in, if I'm in my la la land bubble, please do not burst it. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it's that we are recognizing that we have to balance those things within corporate America in order to save the world. <laughs> you know what? I think you're right. And I think when you talk about feminine and masculine traits, it's not women and men. Mm -mm. It's actually the traits like tr passionate, kindness, courage, trustworthy that are both feminine and masculine, yep. both men and women. And, you know, I, I love that you're talking about that because it is inclusive. It is inclusive. We're, in, you know, and we're not just, again, back to the numbers. It's not just about the numbers. What does inclusivity and belonging really, really mean? It's mm -hmm. honoring, it's honoring all of those other things that, again, in corporate America, I believe have to our detriment, um, have, uh, have been, tamped down right. and and not considered uh valuable or worthy of um uh, like you know being able to bring a certain energy into a meeting come yeah. on you know women are uh, and that feminine energy um it are like it's it, amazing at that we can read a room we we can and we can uh feel where we need to tend to certain things. Um, that's where that that's that intuitive uh, right. feminine energy that can completely change the direction of a product, uh, you know, design meeting or a budget meeting or whatever. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, um, with my side B characters, those are all the characters we put in there. You know, and it's really important to you for me that people say, well, you're I don't always lead with the soft skills. But you know what? If you have those soft skills and those hard skills together, what an extraordinary leader you can be. Right. Yep. yep. The, the, the best of the best, really. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's amazing. Um, and you're going to attract all, you know, like turnover, you know, you're going to attract, you're going to retain when that culture, and it definitely is a top down, uh, you know, starts with the leader and the leadership team, you know, when, yeah. when you start to really value and honor those types of qualities and um, give permission to someone to speak up. When something feels off, I don't have to tell you what exactly it is, but I can tell you something's off on this right now. Yeah. Can we just explore it further? Can we get more curious around this? Can we, you know, yeah. ask more questions because something feels off. And when you have that kind of open communication, it's extraordinary, extraordinary what opens up. Right. Right. And, and the conversations, the ideas, everything. Um, a friend of mine, you know, and I used this in when I was in a uh, sales leadership position, taught me to flip the organization chart. Mm -hmm. So I was at the bottom of the organization chart working for those who were, who were my, my team. Yeah. And that's what it's really all about. Yep. That's where energy happens. Yep. You know, because it, it's amazing. Now, you also hold monthly or monthly or quarterly. Monthly, except for July and December, when oh. I like to, I always say July is all about play and December is all about rest. Right. Um, uh, except I believe play and rest should are the threads that should go through every minute of every day. But um mm -hmm. The yeah, so I do the Unstoppable series, and yes. uh, you have been a guest, and uh, so you know that what we do is we bring in um, men and women to talk about particular topics that my community has asked me for in um, coming up. Very in we're so we're this well, we, you got to go to the website because yes. we, we we will be going, we've been testing out 
different. When we were in person, we used to do Saturday mornings. Because right. Saturday mornings, people could come. But then with COVID, we went remote and then we started getting, we had guests from India and Australia and, you know, and, and I'm like, oh, we need to stay virtual. And so that we continue to do that. But then we played with, should it be an evening? Should we stay on Saturdays? But we have landed on Fridays. So in 2023, you will always find us, almost always, unless I can't get a particular guest on that day and I, and I want that guest, I will yeah. change anything, right? But Fridays... 11, let's say 11.30 to 12.30 central time. Mm -hmm. um, and you go to the website, you register, it's free. But coming up in September, we have uh, a really amazing talk on um, speaking as kind of a career game changer. So, so being able to, you know, it's about presence and um, not only speaking at events, you know, and, and helping to advance your career by being more visible that way, but also just making presentations to the executive yeah. team. So we'll talk about all that. And then in um, October, I have Michelle Ashby, and she's going to talk about getting on a paid board seat. Oh, you know, because you'll hear this is often what happens again with women is they'll people will say, "Well, start on a start on a volunteer board." you know, learn the ropes, but they don't say that to, to men, to men. It's kind of like, Oh yeah, you want to go on that paid board? Go. You've never been on a board. It's okay. You know? And so, and we're like, no more of that. Right. You know, right. get yourself on a paid board seat, make some more money, you know, mm -hmm. again, you know, and I can't wait till Michelle comes on. Cause I have all kinds of questions. Cause of course I have assumptions that you have to be like a certain place in your career. You have to, you know, I don't know. So we'll find that all out in October. And then November, we have a woman who's been on uh, talent acquisition internally, um, helping companies build their teams. And I, as an external recruiter for lots of my career, we're going to talk about what's the same, what's different, what, you know, how do you work with both? And then I really want to talk about, you know, some of those questions that they, how they like to hear you respond to, you know, your career path and right. internally, you know. That is it's amazing. Yeah. Because internal is also so very important because it is, it is. It, so go to um, the events page at inspiretech.com and it. register for the unstoppable for the upcoming ones. And then you'll be on the list and then you'll get notices about, and sign up for our, for my weekly vlog too. Yeah, that would be great. It was so fun having you. And uh, I, yes, I do love your Unstoppable program because thank you. Me too. Listening, and yep. it was amazing. Just the people that were there, and everyone was so engaged. Yep. Yep. And I think that we that invite kind of, questions, and that kind of community is so important nowadays. I agree. And you can find yours if you go out to the events page and look through past unstoppables, yours will be there. So they can listen to that as well. Thank you. So again, you've been amazing. We're right up at uh, two minutes until we're done. Is there anything, one good tip that you want to give somebody that may be listening? Well, I mean, I guess what I would say, and this is sort of, you know, been part of what we've been talking about today is I, I think ahead of this call a while ago, you had asked me about, um, you know, how does music, how is music beneficial to leadership? Because you're, uh, you know, I love that about you. And I think that music is in that uh, creative space. And I believe that the more you can tap into your creativity, your curiosity as at whatever point you're in in your career with relationship to not only your where you want to go, but that person that's sitting across the desk from you. Um, and so music and, and how do you open up? Because, again, women in tech or steam careers or corporate America, we are heavy on the thinking mind, yes. you know analytical, logical, step-by-step. Step. So how do we move over to the creative mind? Music, art, play, be yeah. curious. That would be my tip. All <laughs> right. Well, that was not a plug. You did that on your own. So I did it on my own. So much. But yes, music ha you know, helps you use both sides of the brain. That's it. 
And I love that you acknowledge that. And I'll see you on the next Unstoppable, I hope. Me too. And, um, thank you again. You've been a pure joy. And when you see Michelle Kelly, tell her I said hello. I sure will. I sure <laughs> okay. will. I, I talk to her tomorrow. So okay, I'll make sure. Good. All right. Thanks, thanks Paula. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for having thanks. me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, that was a fun event, and I'm telling you, she is amazing. Go to her website, sign up for Unstoppable, check out what she's doing with her inspireherdtech.com and all the women she's helping. We're off next week for Labor Day, so on the 12th, check back in, and we'll see you then. Until next time, keep rocking your talent.